Hi everybody, I'm Jason Snell. I'm the editorial director here at Macworld, and it's here. Leopard, Mac OS 10 version 10.5, has arrived. We've had it actually for about a week now, and we've been pouring over it. And, and today what we're going to be able to show you are a few interesting features of Leopard. So four of us are going to give you a glimpse into what's cool about Leopard. I'm going to get things started, and then I'm going to hand it off to Rob Griffiths, Dan Frakes, and Chris Breen. And they're all going to share with you a cool feature that they like in Leopard. But I'm going to start it out, and what I'm going to show you is the updated version of iChat that ships as part of Leopard. I know instant messaging, kind of frivolous, but it's not. I really am a believer in instant messaging as a business tool as well as a personal tool. And this new version of iChat is pretty cool. So let me show you what I like about iChat, and then I'll hand it off to the others, and I'll see you back here in a little bit. So this new version of iChat is version 4.0. And it's got a lot of new features, so let's dive in. One of the first interesting features you'll see is a few new views for your chats. Uh, right now we're in something called Boxes View, which is uh, a little bit more compact than the Bubble View. And then there's also this new kind of view, which is called Compact, which really fits a lot of chat content in a very small space. On the left side, we have the new tab bar. Uh, multiple chats in a single window. A little bubble pops up next to the name of the person you're chatting with if they say something while you're not looking at their chat. And you can close chats from here as well. It saves a lot of space. You can now be logged into multiple AIM accounts at one time in iChat. Here, what you're seeing is four accounts at once. Bonjour, which is my local network. Google Talk which you could do in previous versions of iChat, but it's a lot easier to set up a Google Talk account now. And then two AIM accounts, my Macworld AIM and my personal .Mac AIM. And I'm logged into them all at once. I can see different buddy lists in the different views. It's just much more convenient to have multiple logins at once. You can now record your audio chats and your video chats. So here I'm on an audio chat. I'm going to go to the video menu, choose record chat. What's going to happen is the person I'm talking to is going to be asked for permission for me to start recording. And then as soon as he says yes, a red light will light up and start to blink. And that's indicating that the conversation is then being recorded. You can see the red light blinking right there. And then when you're done, you go back to the video menu and tell it to stop. And it stops recording it and moves it over to iTunes. You can also share your screen with somebody using iChat. So here, Dan has shared his screen with me. I choose accept, and then all of a sudden my screen goes away, and now I am not only seeing what's on his screen, but I can actually control what's happening on his computer using iChat. Pretty cool. You can use iChat Theater to present documents on your computer to somebody on another Mac. In this case, I've taken a keynote presentation. I've shared it using iChat Theater, started a video chat with Dan Frakes, and as soon as that starts, instead of seeing me, he's going to see my presentation. And then I can step through my, my keynote slideshow as if it were a normal slideshow, except what I'm doing is broadcasting it across the internet to Dan using iChat. So I get some slideshow controls here. And from Dan's perspective, he's just sitting back and enjoying this informative slideshow about the last version of Mac OS X, Tiger. And that's a peek into iChat 4. Now here's Rob Griffiths with a look at the new version of Spotlight. Thanks, Jason. Some of you who have read my past writing on Macworld may be surprised to find that I'm talking about Spotlight in 10.5. Well, the truth is, Apple has pretty much addressed every issue I had with Spotlight in 10.4, and I now find it a very useful tool. I thought I'd take a couple minutes and show you some of the things that you may not be aware of that it is now able to do in OS X version 10.5. To demonstrate the differences in Spotlight between 10.4 and 10.5, I'm going to use this folder, which contains most of my weblog posting for Macworld over the last three years, as well as some additional projects. I'll first demonstrate the same search in both 10.4 and 10.5, so you can see how some of the new options work in OS 10.5 Leopard. First, we'll demonstrate the search in 10.4. As you can see, this is the Finder and its Spotlight search box, and I'm going to type in three words that I tend to use a fair bit, and they are use this trick. So I'll just click in the box to make it active and type in my search term. And let's see what happened. As you can see, we found 112 matches. That's in the small number at the very bottom of the screen. Here's a larger look at it. 112 matches for use this trick. That's quite a lot and it really didn't help me with the search because what I really want to find is the phrase use this trick. 
But in 10.4 you can't do it. If I try to put quotes around this expression, you'll see what happens. So now all I'm going to do is edit my entry in the search box by putting double quotes around it, which means this is a phrase. But as you can see, Spotlight didn't find anything, and that's because Spotlight in 10.4 does not support phrase searching. Let's see how it works in 10.5. So here we are in 10.5, and this is the Finder's Spotlight search box, and we're just going to mouse up there and enter the Use This Trick text, and see how many things OS 10.5 finds. As you can see, Spotlight found the exact same number of items, 112, as it did in 10.4. However, we can now take advantage of Spotlight's new features to easily narrow our search even further. As I did in 10.4, I'm simply going to enclose my search terms in double quotes and see what happens. This time, you can see that Spotlight found 14 items. Those are the 14 files in my collection that actually have the phrase, use this trick. This is a very powerful new feature of Spotlight and makes it much easier to find what you want. To demonstrate the next new feature in 10.5 Spotlight, I need some text files. And in those text files, I need some text that won't be found in any of my other documents. Hence, these four odd files you see on the screen. As you can see, each word has been prefaced by ZZ, and the only reason for that is to make sure that the text I've typed won't be found in any other files when I run these Spotlight searches. So what are we going to do now? Now I'm going to demonstrate how to use Boolean searches in 10.5 Spotlight. In order to make this a little easier, let's rearrange things so we can see all four text edit windows, as well as the Finder's search box. And let's start with a simple search for ZZCat. As you can see, Spotlight found all three files that have ZZCat. We'll make it a little trickier, we'll add the word ZZDog, and again Spotlight found the two files where both terms occur. And as I pointed out earlier, you can do phrase searching, and the phrase ZZCat ZZOver appears in only one file. But the real power in 10.5 are Boolean searches in Spotlight. That's the ability to use words like AND, and OR, and parentheses to control how your search is built and exactly what is found. In this case, we want to find ZZCat and either ZZJumped or ZZDog. And as you can see, there are three files where those conditions are met, and Spotlight found all three of them. The ability to do Boolean searching in Spotlight is a wonderful addition, and when combined with the ability to phrase search, Spotlight has become a truly powerful tool. I thought I'd leave you with one last feature of the new Spotlight, and that's the ability to do calculations. Simply enter your calculations in the Spotlight search box, and you'll see the result highlighted, ready for you to select. Select it, and Calculator will open if you need to do further calculations. Spotlight knows about 40 basic mathematical operators, so you can do quite a bit without even launching Calculator. Pretty cool. And now, here's Dan Frakes to show you a couple of minor but very useful improvements to the Finder and the Dock. Thanks, Rob. You know, one of the minor complaints about the Finder has been that sometimes when you're looking at a folder, it can be difficult to figure out exactly where that folder resides. Now, long-time Mac users know that if you command click on the title bar icon in any Finder window, you'll get a little pop-up menu that shows you the path to that folder. It's a useful feature, but one that's a little bit hidden. Since Panther, Mac OS X has provided another way of getting this information, and that's by adding the path item to Finder window toolbars. You do this using the Customize Toolbars command, and once you've added the path item, it shows up in all Finder windows, and clicking on it shows you the path to the current folder. Now this is a little more convenient than command clicking on the title bar icon, but some people would still like the path to be visible all the time. In Leopard, we finally get this capability. From the View menu, choose Show Path Bar, and a new path bar is added to the bottom of each and every Finder window. This path bar shows the path to the current folder. Now, as you navigate around your hard drive in the same window, the path bar changes to reflect the current location. So, for example, if I were to switch to my home directory, or to the applications folder, or to the computer view, the path bar will always change to reflect where I'm currently at. Now, unfortunately, you still can't copy the path, which is one of the most requested features we have, but it's still a big improvement over having to click on little icons. One of the more popular features of Mac OS X's Finder has been spring-loaded folders. For example, I've got a file here on my desktop, a movie file, and I'd like to put it in the movies folder in my home directory. I've got an alias to my home directory here. I can just drag the movie file onto the home icon, up pops my home directory, and I can drop it in the movies folder. In Leopard, Apple has added this spring-loaded feature to items in the dock. For example, I've got my home folder here in the dock, as you can see when I click on it, and a stack appears showing its contents. But when I drag the movie file, onto the home folder in the dock, instead a finder window appears showing the contents of my home folder. I can just drag the movie file directly into the movies folder. But this feature also works with applications. 
For example, say I've got a Pages document I'm working on, and I'd like to drag a text clipping from the desktop into that Pages document, but say the Pages window is hidden behind a bunch of other windows. I just drag the clipping file onto the Pages icon, press the spacebar, and Pages pops forward, letting me drag the text into the document. I can do the same thing with a photo. Just drag the photo to the Pages icon, press the spacebar, and Pages comes forward, letting me drag the photo wherever I want within that document. Or say I want to add that picture to iPhoto. I just drag the picture over the iPhoto icon in the dock, iPhoto pops up, and I drop the picture. I can even drag the picture directly to a particular album. Now compared to some of the other new features in Leopard, these are fairly minor, but they're minor features that you may end up using on a daily basis. Now here's Chris, and he's going to tell you a little bit about new features in Preview. Thanks very much, Dan. And as this icon hints, I'm going to be speaking about some of the new features in Preview. Of course, not everything is new. The old elements remain, but are prettier or have been enhanced. For example, you can now enlarge thumbnails in the sidebar. You can also launch slideshows from the preview window rather than having to go to a menu. And while slideshows play, you can view pictures full screen as well as send them to iPhoto. Leopard's preview gussies up the color adjustments palette so that it looks like iPhotos and it adds more intuitive controls for black and white levels. New to preview is the instant alpha feature that allows you to easily remove a background and leave just the subject in place. Like the iWork applications, Preview now has an inspector where you can learn the intimate details of the files you're working with. If you like, you can add keywords to your files that Spotlight can keep track of. While it's still no Acrobat Professional, the new version of Preview allows you to mark up and annotate PDF files. For example, you can now select text and then highlight it. If you'd like to call attention to something in a PDF file, you can now draw a shape around it. And if you'd like to add a note, you can do that too. And there you have it, a quick preview of Preview. And now back to Jason. And there you have it, four cool features in Mac OS X Leopard. As always, you can get more information about Leopard and all things Mac at Macworld.com, and there will be plenty more about Leopard in the weeks ahead. So until next time, for Chris Breen, Dan Frakes, and Rob Griffiths, I'm Jason Snell. Thanks for watching this Macworld video. We'll see you next time.